Hey, Dion, what did it mean to you to land this job full time at your alma mater? Uh, it meant everything. Um, obviously, playing here, GAing here, and then getting the opportunity to coach these guys. I mean, these guys are phenomenal. I love these guys, so uh, it meant everything. Uh, these guys been great. The uh, they fight every day. They play hard. So them guys make this job even better than you can ever imagine. So having those those guys in the front four and everybody that's contributing, I love it. Can you take us through, James? It, it sounded like you got the job kind of the day before spring practice. Can you take me through how that happened, how it kind of unfolded, and then what was the reaction like from your family, from your friends, and all the, those sorts of things? Um, so it was like the Monday of once uh, Coach Scott left, I got interviewed. I think I did a good job, obviously. And then um, throughout the two weeks, they was doing other interviews and trying to see who they wanted to hire. And then the day before spring, like you said, the day before spring ball, um, he told me I got it. And then that's two hours later, you see the video with the kids going crazy. Um, what was the what was your this? family and your friends, oh, especially my, former players? I have to imagine people were going crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. My mother called me, damn near crying. Um, it was everybody was excited. I mean, they know how much these kids mean to me and how much this job means to, to, to them kids. So it was it was a it was a dream come true. But it was also with my family and everything. They know the work that I had to put in. So my dad called me right away. He's like, hey, you know how much work we got to put in right now. So get to it. What were those two weeks like for you personally? Like, were you thinking about it a lot? Or were you, what were you feeling over those two weeks? Yeah. Especially interviewing right away and then kind of waiting it out. Obviously, you know, you get all the thoughts in your head and things like that. but. I've been through things before where, you know, you got to play the waiting game and you got to see how things go. So it was more of like going through those things before kind of made me a little bit more like ready for this. So once the, those things that I'm waiting for, um, I was able to, you know, just try to like find ways to like calm myself down and just not think about it and just, you know, control the controllables. You remember yeah. the moment that you were told that you got it? How did you react? What was that moment like? I was like, oh, it was like, Wow, like that's it was like a wild moment. So, I mean, it's incredible. Hey, Dion, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe that you worked with Terry Smith on recruiting. Either way, just what has been his impact on you on that side of the ball, and just kind of you know what have you learned from him, if anything, about you know coming back to your alma mater to coach? Uh, he taught me how to be organized with things, how to how to um, be thorough with the communication with high school coaches and the kids, and understanding who to contact and who not to contact. Um, he told me how to basically order things, and the organization was the biggest part. I mean, he, the organization that coached, coached Terry, because he got a whole spreadsheet of guys in the area, and he told me how to area recruit. He told me how to position recruit. I mean, he's been a, a huge impact on me because he just, I mean, he had the Philly area, so it was like if I had a lead on a guy and I, I knew a guy, then it was like, all right, you got it, and if I didn't, I played a backhand. And he just told me how to just, you know, maneuver my way through the recruit. Do you have a sense of how much that institutional knowledge helped you during the interview process? Um, it helped me. It helped me a lot. I mean, it was it was more of like when I'm going in, I'm talking about things. Is you just seeing it? I done done and proven it. So that was kind of um, it was kind of like when I said it, it was like I got facts to be able to back that up. How much pride you take in the fact that you bridged like all of these different staffs? and stuff you know as a player and now to be part of this kind of as a coach there's a lot of different people that you can kind of represent mm -hmm. i mean can you, re can you rephrase that how mm -hmm. much pride do you take you're one of the few players who was with all three staffs oh, yeah and now, now you're actually coaching with this staff mm -hmm. i mean how much pride do you take thinking that hey listen i've been a part of all of this through all thick and thin high and low no matter what i mean you know as an alum you know it's like you didn't see what we went through, especially with during the little dark time. So um, it's, it's a lot of passion. It's a lot of passion. And the reason why I'm doing everything, I want to make sure we get as many great players that we can here. And I want to make sure I'm coaching the guys the best that they can be because ultimately I play here, like I said, and then I'm coaching here now. So I want to see Penn State be on top. The, the, the Whatever our top is, I want to make sure we're at that. And it's, it's going to be passion behind that because obviously I play here, I got my friends here, and then you know, you want to make sure your your team that you didn't play for is the best team they possibly can be. What's been the biggest change for you since taking over the room? Um, the room has always been good. Like with with me and Coach Scott when we was here, uh, I'm trying to think of a change. I mean, them kids, 
it's phenomenal kids, man. I mean, they they they're attentive, they detailed, they do everything you ask them to do. It was the same thing they was doing when I was the GA. So this the I don't really see them. They don't see me in a different light. They see me as the same type of coach and being the same type of disciplinarian that I have been before. I mean, I don't really see that much of a change. The kids they don't change, and it's more of all right. I got to do this now, and the message is a different person, but the message is kind of similar with me and Coach Scott. As James Just, mentioned the defensive tackle kind of being a spot where you have some guys banged up. How do you evaluate the guys that you have available this spring and, and how they're doing um, at defensive tackles? At defensive tackle, Zane's doing a great job. JJ is stepping up. Um, Zane is, is is flashing every day. He's doing some good things. So at defensive tackle spot, he's it, them guys all growing as a um, as a unit, but Zane is popping out a lot. How City. about at the end? I'm sorry. He's, James also said at the end is about as deep as you guys have been mm -hmm. and as talented. Uh, can you just tell us about that position in general? And when you hear that, as somebody who started as a defensive end, mm -hmm. what kind of goes through your head when you're a uh, coach saying that? Um, I think it is. I mean, it's a deep group, but the biggest thing is they're competitive. I mean, they, they learn it from each other, and it's just this every day. They see somebody do something, they want to do something better than that next person. So. It's highly competitive, and it, I wanted to be there. And I think at DTAC was highly competitive as well. So at both positions, I feel like they know every day is uh, can be the, with the moment where somebody moves up or move down, whatever it is. So they treating it as that, and that that makes the best players they could possibly be. What's one of the biggest things that you've learned in these first couple of weeks is taking over the job fully? Um, organization. I think that's the biggest thing I'm learning is just like making sure you plan your day, day in and day out and then communicating with the kids more of not only just the football things, but you know, off the field things as well, just trying to make sure they're organized as well, trying to make sure I'm a helpful hand more off the field than I was when I was a, a GA. Have the players been helping you with that a little bit since they know like, what they expected from Scott? Mm -hmm. I mean, the player's been great. That's, that's, that's the best part of this job is that the players have been, I mean, everything that I asked them to do, they're doing, so that's, uh, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better group. Hey, Dion, I think in one of the videos that the team released, Manny said that you had been interviewing for this job like every day, just mm -hmm. kind of being a grad assistant. When you got back here originally in that position, did you have in the back of your mind, you know, if an opportunity opens up here, you know, maybe that's something that I can be working toward? I mean, the way I work and the way my dad told me how to work was you work as hard as you possibly can on an everyday basis. So I kind of like those things take care of themselves. I mean, I control the controllers at time, all times, so it was more of me trying to make sure Penn State was a, the best Penn State they can be, and that was the handling of my job at Divas Line Coach. So the thought up behind that was just making sure I can do my job the best. Was coaching all was coaching always in your, in the back of your mind, or was there a point where, you know, in your playing career, you thought coaching would be for you? Uh, I didn't know it until it happened. Um, I, was, I thought I was going to play in the NFL a long time, and then it was just more of like me trying to help back at uh, my high school. Northeast, and, yeah. Yes, sir, yeah. and on Northeast. So once that once that happened, then I was like, well, I actually love this thing. So it turned from my passion from actually playing to coaching. Did, did you expect realistically to have to go somewhere else before you could land a job like this? Um, that, that I mean, that's the path that everybody usually goes through. So uh, that was the thought. But when this thing came up, it wasn't a doubt in my mind that, you know, it could be a possibility that I can get this thing. So, I mean, the, the work I put in from the years before and the connection I have with these kids, you know, I felt like it could have been, a, it was a good uh, possibility I could get this thing. In, in what ways did you feel like you were most prepared for it? Um, like, why were you the guy for the job? I mean, the obviously, you know, um, the last three years of the work that I put in of every day, um, the knowledge that I was able to soak up from the guys that like Coach Terry, Coach Scott, Coach Banks, all those, I just soaking up all that knowledge. So when the time came, I was ready for it because of what everybody else had basically just having the ears and listening and then implementing that. So it's just those people around me, the staff, Coach Franklin, Coach Franklin ultimately has got me ready because, I mean, everything that he does, he try to make sure like, I mean, the same way he's on these kids, the same way he's on me. You know what I'm saying? So he made sure that I would be ready if it was here, wherever it was. So, I mean, I think he does a great job with, with trying to train young guys to make sure when that position open, job comes open, that you're able to be ready for it. How often have you leaned on John Scott over the last few weeks and, you know, you know tossing ideas off him and trying to make sure you're doing this how you want to do it and how, you know, achieving what you want to achieve? It's actually been Coach Scott and Coach Franklin. 
I mean, Coach Scott, I just asked him about like small few things to make sure I'm doing things right here. Um, little, little, little small details, and then Coach Franklin just making sure I'm doing the things right as as in this whole uh, big picture type thing. So I've been leaning on both of them. I mean, I've been leaning on Coach Manny a lot. I mean, any advice that them that, that or any things that they feel like I need to be at work on, I'm I'm good with that, and I'll and I'll and I'll, and I'll execute the, that plan. How important has that been to your growth, kind of being willing to listen, knowing you're kind of the young guy in the room, being willing to listen and willing to adjust, not just since you took this job, but as a GA? Um, I mean, that's that's how I grew up. I mean, you got to be a sponge, um, continue to know information, and the information that you learned, you got to be able to implement that. That's the biggest thing is transferring that information from the mind and to, to put it into work. So, I mean, that's, that's, how, that's how I've been since I've been a kid. There's a lot of youth on this team, especially on the defensive side. James was talking about defensive line, the linebackers. Um, you know, and of course, you're entering this role for the first time too. Do you think that explains? So, you know, we've seen the videos of everybody reacting to your announcement as, as the D-line coach. What do you think explains the connection that you have with with, with the defense, and defensive line specifically? Um, at my the years that I put in, that while I was here. So, I mean, I was Coach Gap. Would he tra he 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 basically laid it out to where he would coach the guys and I was I was helping so those those guys that would come to me and that needed that extra help or whatever it was I was there for them so that's where the connection grew at and they knew I was willing to do whatever it could I could do um, to be able to make them better so they knew that um, from the drills and all the extra work and the film and stuff like that that when when it came time that I was going to be a, a great guy for the job I mean them kids is incredible.